Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Since September 1, the first day of National Suicide Prevention Month, 944 Americans have died by suicide, including 160 veterans. Since the passage of H.R. 2646, the Mental Health Reform Act in the House of Representatives in July, 7,552 Americans have died from suicide, including 1,280 veterans. I had the honor of meeting the parents of S Sergeant Daniel Summers, who served bravely in Operation Iraqi Freedom. On June 13, 2013, Daniel took his own life after suffering from PTSD and traumatic brain injury. His family is heartbroken. He left a letter for his family before he took his own life, and I would like to share his words. He wrote, I am sorry that it has come to this. The fact is, for as long as I can remember, my motivation for getting up every day has been so that you would not have to bury me. As things have continued to get worse, it has become clear that this alone is not a sufficient reason to carry on. The fact is, I'm not getting better. I'm not going to get any better and I will most certainly deteriorate further as time goes on. From a logical standpoint, it is better to simply end things quickly and let any repercussions from that play out in the short term than to drag things out into the long term. I really have been trying to hang on for more than a decade now. Each day has been a testament to the extent to which I cared, suffering unspeakable horror as quietly as possible so that you could feel as though I was still here for you. In truth, I was nothing more than a prop filling space so that my absence would not be noted. In truth, I have already been absent for a long, long time. My body has become nothing but a cage, a source of pain and constant problems. It is nothing short of torture. My mind is a filled with visions of incredible horror, unceasing depression, and crippling anxiety. Is it any wonder then that the latest figures show 22 veterans killing themselves each day, that is more veterans than children who were killed at Sandy Hook every single day? Where are the huge policy initiatives? Well, Mr. Speaker, this is a letter that did not have to write and did not have to be written. I can't even imagine the grief of parents of Daniel, but I also know that they want to spare other parents the same kind of grief. I continue to practice psychology at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center at Bethesda. I work with veterans who, like Daniel, suffer from depression and PTSD and traumatic brain injury. I've seen firsthand that with treatment, these soldiers can and do get better. When our brave men and women come home, they and their families deserve better care. Yet, we do not have enough crisis psychiatric hospital beds. Half the counties in America have no psychiatrists or no psychologists. And for every 1,000 people with an addiction disorder, only six, only six get evidence-based care. And families are blocked from helping by a massive bureaucracy. So we can read more sad letters like Daniel's, or we can act. The House answered that call on July 6, 2016, when we passed by a near-unanimous vote, H.R. 2646, the Helping Families and Mental Health Crisis Act. But it only works, and it only gives help if it is signed into law. I don't want any more moments of silence for Daniel or the thousands of other veterans or citizens who have died by suicide. We don't need more moments of silence. We need times of action. Those moments of silence are a slap in the face to the mothers and fathers who struggle to get help for their sons and daughters. So I ask, how can the Senate even contemplate the talk of going home before this is passed with its death toll climbing, even when they have the solution in their hands? Indecision and politics are overruling compassion and common sense. What about veterans like Daniel, for whom help never came? On behalf of those silenced voices, I call upon the Senate to take action and pass H.R. 2646 before they go home at the end of September. We must have treatment before tragedy. We must provide mental health support. After all, 90 percent of suicide deaths have a co-occurring mental illness. Otherwise, what will we tell those family members who find the next suicide note? That when there was a chance to act, Congress went home? These veterans will never go home. These thousands of other people who committed suicide, non-veterans, will never go home again. And the Senate should not go home again in September without passing H.R. 2646. Remember, where there is help, there is hope. I yield back.